Okay, this video is about Roberto Luongo potentially becoming a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And if you've been watching my stuff for a long time, you know that this is agony for me. Not agony because it's the Leafs, although they've been synonymous with agony recently. Not agony because it's Luongo. Agony because trade rumors suck. Or rather, most trade proposals suck. Would you trade Derp Herp for Herp Derp? I don't know! What, if you were the Leafs, you wouldn't do this trade? Of course I'd take it if the other GM was drunk enough to accept it! Okay, deep breaths. We gotta take some deep breaths if we're gonna get through this. Alright, scouring the Twitterverse and te internets, you'll see that Steve Eiserman not so big on getting Luongo. We want someone younger and cheaper. Ironically enough, that kind of sounds like Corey Schneider. So one of the teams allegedly still in the hunt is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Because most Toronto trade rumors actually happen- No, 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 I said I'd be nice, I'll get through this. Let's pretend those rumors are legit. A lot of people think getting Luongo would be great. A lot of people think it'd be crazy. I'd like to give you my opinion on that, but I'm gonna intersplice some other opinions in there. A lot of those opinions coming from this guy right here, Cam Sharon, follow him on Twitter. BC based guy, incredible with numbers, one of my favorite follows. So one, those stats I talked about, well he talks about something called quality starts. The amount of quality starts a goalie has. And a quality start is when a goaltender stops 91.3% of the shots he faces on any given night. Based on Cam stats, Gustafson, Reimer, and Scrivens combined for 32 quality starts last season in 81 games. Uh, the one that's missing, UC Runis, uh, they, they lost like 7-1. Well, in 56 starts, Luongo had 34 quality starts. He also had an even strength save percentage of .930, which is fourth among goalies in the league with 50 or more appearances. In other words, holy crap, that's good. But what about that contract? It's like a billion years to all get to it. And even though Luongo's stats are good, Cam points out another thing that I think makes him a horrible candidate for the Leafs. Now, we all remember Luongo's epic meltdowns in games three and six of the Stanley Cup final against the Bruins, but we never highlight the fact that he pretty much stole game one and five. And a lot of goalies around the league experience this. Luongo may be the worst. No one remembers your good performances, only the bad ones. Don't expect anyone to remember your good performances if you let in a few stinkers in Toronto. Let's not forget, Luongo's also playing behind a better team in Vancouver. The Canucks are great. They got the Sedins for crying out loud. And it's much easier to forget a bad performance when your team's doing great. You know what the Canucks remind me of? Gossip Girl. Yeah, I've seen a few episodes. I have a girlfriend. Screw you. But anyway, in every episode, there's drama and fighting, and I'm like, you're rich! What is there to argue about? Your life rules! This is also kind of a Louis C.K. bit. He's starting to become the Simpsons did it of comedy, and I love him for it. But whenever during this season I saw Canucks fans complain about Luongo, whoa, there's Schneider back there. He's doing great. Shut up! Stop complaining! You're in first! And actually, in this sense, maybe Luongo would be a perfect goalie for Toronto because you need someone who's accustomed to dealing with stupid drama. One thing that I think makes Luongo horrible for Toronto, and Cam pointed this out, he gives up a lot of rebounds. Cam says based on statistics, Luongo is beat on a lot of second and third opportunities or where there's weird bounces in front. Well, what goalie isn't beaten in those situations? But one thing about giving up those second and third shots and the crazy bounces in front, you gotta be able to trust your defense to get that situation away from you. Now the Canucks defense, not bad, not amazing. They're, eh. I think they certainly play a system really well, and they also have the benefit of having not one, but two amazing goalies, and Alain Vigneault should be given a lot of credit for that. I can't believe they were even considering getting rid of him, and congrats to him for getting his extension. All right, enough fawning over the Canucks. Let's pretend Luongo is in a blue and white uniform. Wait, let's pretend Luongo is in a blue and white uniform without the green. He's, he's, a, he's a Leaf. He's on the Leafs. Let's pretend that, and he gives up a rebound. How's that gonna go? Moreover, what I'm asking, do you trust the Leafs' defense? After their second half? Uh, uh, to be honest, not not really. So does he fit the current system, or the Leafs' team, or just where they are in development? I don't think so. And what's even going on with the Leafs' goalie situation? The only goalies with contracts beyond this season are Reimer and Marco Wuya. Do they re-sign Gustafsson, Scrivens, Runis, or any of these guys sticking around? A layer? Oh, and that one minor detail, they just got a new coach. Well, actually, if I can contradict myself, maybe in that sense, it's good to bring in a new guy, because there's a new guy. The goalie comes in and is like, I gotta learn the system, and the rest of the team's like, yeah, us too. Another thing about a potential Luongo trade, because remember, it's gotta be a trade, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, no one ever remembers both these things at the same time. What the Leafs are willing to give up, and what the Canucks want. You can't think about one or the other, it's gotta be both. Now, Cam mentioned a couple guys that might fit the bill well for Vancouver would be Clark MacArthur and Carl Gunnarsson. And damn it, that breaks my heart because I love both those guys. The guy I was gonna bring up, and I think they brought this up on Canucks Army, I'm not sure, I was reading the internet, so let's say it was Canucks Army. Sorry if it wasn't. Uh, Nikolai Kuhlman. First flaw with that, doesn't have a contract. Restricted free agent anyway. And I think Leafs fans would be happy to part with him, but I think that's kind of unfair. His production this season was massive. 
maddening. It was awful, but on any given night, he wasn't nearly the worst player. Kuhlman was only a plus two on the season, but considering he was one of just four Leafs that played 25 or more games to end the season as a plus, uh, that's pretty good. He's a reliable defensive forward who doesn't really like big hits, but he plays physically. And I still think if you put him with the right skill, I don't know if he could return to the 30 goal plateau, but he can still get you 20, 25 goals a season. And when the Canucks are beating teams, they have no problem scoring on them. They usually route them. But with teams that figure the Canucks out, they shut them down totally and they bully them. Guys like Kuhlman, and to Cam's point, MacArthur would be perfect for a Canucks lineup. In fact, MacArthur just every now and then whoops ass. There haven't been many thrills for Leafs fans to enjoy over the last few seasons, but one of the few has been, Oh, MacArthur's in a fight! Who's he beating to a pulp this time? And it's always like, Yarrow Spachek? Chad Rose? why is he fighting Chad? Oh, he threw him! You see that? He threw him! And anyway, last but not least, because frankly I'm getting tired and out of breath and this video is getting kind of long. Luongo's contract. Why would the Leafs want Luongo's $10 million a year contract? Because it's not $10 million, stupid. It's a $5,333,333. It's a five followed by six threes, okay? He did make $10 million in salary in 2010-11, but the most he makes for the rest of his contract is $6,714,000. But, and this is the rub, the contract takes him to the 2021 2022 season. And that $6,714,000 salary I was telling you about doesn't drop off until 2018, 2019. So what I'm saying about that is, is Luongo worth the risk based on his skill and his statistics? Absolutely. However, the cost is going to have to reflect that crazy length in contract. It's not the amount of money, it's the length. So you'd think most teams would be pretty reserved in their offers just because of the crazy length of that contract. Not so much the dollar amount, but the length. And also keep in mind there's a lot of reports and stuff that Luongo kind of asked for the trade, so the Canucks can't exactly be choosers here. Now what does this all have to do with the Leafs? Well here's where it all really comes from. Would Luongo be a fit? Honestly, there's a couple alarm bells that go off, a couple red flags. For the most part, yeah, I think he'd be a good fit and he'd help out the team and make them better. You'd have to do some wiggling and you'd have to figure some things out, but if you get him at the right price, good move. But what upset me is the rumors came from, well, the Leafs need a goalie and Luongo's available. And I realize that sounds like it means something, but it doesn't need to mean anything. Should they explore the option? Sure, but it's not a guaranteed thing, even sort of. And with the Leafs' whole goaltending situation, people tend to forget that Reimer got his bell rung and was never the same. And maybe a full, long summer off of training is exactly what the doctor ordered. They got a goalie in Ben Scrivens whose AHL playoff stats just really jump off the page at you. And he, if the Marlies win it all, win the Calder Cup, you might be playoff MVP. And what I think about that is maybe it's not so desperate that the Leafs need a new starting goaltender and pay him tons of money but a solid, relatively affordable veteran backup who can teach the young guys some things, but also pull his weight. Basically, what J.S. Jaguar turned out to be in Colorado because apparently he's healthy now, damn it! But rather, how about not saying he's available, but a guy like uh, Marty Biron. Relax, relax, doesn't have to be Marty Biron, a guy like Marty Biron. So that's all I gotta say in video form. Uh, I'm literally sweating, so I'm gonna cut the video off here. Maybe we'll do some more of these. As long as there's coffee in me, I'm good. And for any of the Canucks fans watching, I believe this is from your neck of the woods, right, Kicking Horse? It's good, man. East Scarborough, Yvonne's Coffee House. Try it. So, in closing, Roberto Luongo, welcome to Toronto. Or maybe not. Probably, though. Probably not. Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. Pro shut up.